We've had another decent crowd at uh, the J. Davidson Stadium this afternoon. Over 1,300 in the ground for a keenly contested and very close affair between Altrincham and Halifax Town. We're talking to manager Matt Doughty. Matt, uh, just the one goal in it uh, today and we went very, very close and I thought competed uh, competed well. Yeah, we were a better team. Billy's come off there and Billy said, you know, we, we didn't deserve that. Uh, to a man, they put a shift in, they were committed. And football's a cruel game at times. Tim Deasy's come in and said, you know, he's had nothing to do and it, he's ended up picking the ball at the back of his net. So, yeah, very disappointed, very disappointed result. We did deserve more, but I couldn't have asked any more from the players. Individually to a man, they haven't matched or they were better than them. So it, it's it's a tough one to take, it really is. The goal came from a pretty, what well, looked to me, a pretty innocuous uh, free kick won by the uh, the substitute, Johnny, Danny Clark. Um, and then we didn't really seem to sort of quite clear the ball, but uh, although it was a, a quite a cleanly struck shot by Liam King, it's certainly taken a bit of an unfortunate deflection. Yeah, Tim said it's took a deflection. I didn't see the free kicks, to be fair. I said... I, like I said, I didn't see it, so I can't really comment. But could we have cleared our lines better? I, I don't know. We'll have to see it again. But like I said, it's 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 a cruel game at times. I mean, we got in some great up, great areas at times with crosses, especially down our left, and we hit the f first man every time. So y you know, hopefully, if we play, we've got 16 games left. If we if we're committed as like that are, we are there. We will win more than we lose if we are. If we show that passion and that desire, and we match them we win more than we lose. One thing that was noticeably different from a number of recent games is that we were much, much tighter defensively uh, right from the word go because Halifax gave us a good testing in the first 10 minutes particularly. Well, I mean, Jake, I rested Tom again today because he's, um, he's pulled his abductor muscle in his, in his groin area. So, you know, the, the bigger picture says, you know, just rest him for a few weeks. So put Jake back there and Kyle slotted in at, you know, defensive centre and they, they were both brilliant. They didn't put a foot wrong. Not, not one player put a foot wrong. Uh, John Cyrus, magnificent again, won man of the match. Their keeper won the man of the match, saved a pen. And a great save from James Lowe. I think it was James Laurie. Great save from James Lowe. So it could have been a totally different picture at half time. Could have been coming in 2 0 up. And the way we fought and the way we pressed and the way we, we battled, we would have won that game if we would have gone in 2 0. Yeah, we did have a big opportunity early on. Andy Owens has done very well to uh, get us the penalty in the first place. Uh, and Jake's hit it. He does tend to sort of smack them uh, very, very hard. But it, it was a good save by the keeper, but it was a nice height for him. Yeah, look, I've, I've missed one or two penalties in my day, so I'm not going to have a go at Jake. Like like you said, Brian, he normally hits him sweet and he normally hits him down the middle, like he did at Blythe. But look, that's the nature of the beast. The keeper's there to save it. He's there to score and Warren's going to win. So it was a good save. And then he made a great save off James Laurie. Um, so yeah, that happens. Missing pens happens. Missing pens happens. But you know, Jake Moult was fantastic today. He led by example. John, John Saris next to him, one man in the match. He was he won every header, and a big, big well done to Kyle because I thought he was magnificent all game. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think uh, Kyle Brownhill certainly in two of the last three games. He's uh, I thought Brackley was outstanding, and and again today. So he he looks like he's developing. Yeah, well. I think we found a new position for him because obviously we brought him in. He's playing left wing back for Hyde and we brought him in for left for cover on the left for cover. So we tried him at left back and he it was touch and go whether to keep him there. So we tried him at centre mid and against FC United and it just fits. It's, the position just suits him. He's defensively minded anyway. He's decent in the air. He's got a nice left foot to turn around and yeah, I think we found a new position. Halifax, uh, it was a big game for them, certainly a big second half, and they needed uh, the win, but as, as Billy Heath said, they're probably going uh, back over up the M62 thinking they've got away with it a bit today. Yeah, Billy's an honest man. I mean, we spoke to him for the past five or six weeks, Bill, obviously, ever since he knew he took over, and he's been he's been, he's been singing that man and Robbie's praises, to be fair, saying he's heard good things, and uh, he knew today wouldn't be an easy easy task for them. So, yeah, he, he, he speaks the truth, Billy, and he said after the game, he said that you didn't deserve that, you know, so... A man who's managed where he has in the conference and, and higher than this, and you know, I, I respect the man totally. So I'll, I'll, I'll believe what he says, and, and people watching that game will we'll see we were the better team. But obviously, goals change games, goals change games, and they've, uh, they've got theirs. We tried, we've huffed and puffed in the final third, but didn't really get there. 
And at this stage of the season and in, in, in the dire situation that we're in, it's not really about uh, trying to survive at the moment. It's about trying to get that first uh, win. And we have gone close today, but uh, surely it's got to come quite soon. Well, like I just said in there, then I said, if you give that commitment in the last 16 games or whatever, whatever there is, we will win more than we lose because they're, they'll be in the playoffs after today. I think they'll be going in the playoffs. So, and they're, they're not a bad team. I don't think they were great today. I think Billy were the first one to admit that, but because we matched them and we battled them, we were in the face. So, yeah, everyone's down, I'm down. It's just, at the minute, it's like we can't buy one at the minute, but we're trying, we're progressing. There, has, there is progress, you can see that. Any man, can, any man who knows, fo knows football can see this progression at this club on the pitch. And um, I think you've picked out probably the, the, the best players in terms of uh, Jake Malt, John Cyrus and Kyle Brownhill. But I think there were other positives as well. I thought uh, Andy McWilliams did a decent job at left-back. Elliot Newby was bright at times. And I thought James Laurie worked very hard. I, I can't fault him. I mean, I did, not had a go at him, but obviously a sub Sammy have caught at half-time. But look, he's a kid. He's learned the game. And I said to him at half-time, I said, if my kids, my kids at home were reading a book and they struggle with words, I wouldn't have a go at them. Because they're learning, learning to read, like he's learning the game. So he's no point to have a go at him. He's trying, he's an ulti lad, he's trying for the club. Now, Andy McWilliams, he was out of the squad against Brackley. Totally out of the squad, I said, listen, you don't have to travel because you're not, you're not going to be in the squad. But he came, he ran, so his attitude, his application, spot on. And he deserved his chance and he took it. And I'm a, I'm a fair man, I've told him I'm a fair man. If you've got a problem, come and see me and I'll tell you why you're not playing. I'll tell you what you need to do to get back in the team. And Andy's done that. And he'll stay in the team because he's done well today. Elliot was brilliant today again. Really, really positive fella. He done well when he went up front as well. He caused Matty Brown and uh, the other centre half problems. Yeah, yeah, he scored him. He's causing problems because he's got that bit, a bit of extra pace. And that's he caught, pace causes problems. And from your and your point of view and Robbie's point of view, uh, is it is it about just getting this this first win now? Is that is that is that your, your sole objective? Well, look, I'm not being funny. I'm, I'm an honest guy. If if I lose 16 games, I won't be here next year. It's as simple as that. I need to show the chairman and the board directors I can win football games. If I can't, then rightfully so, I won't be the manager next year. Now, it's not because I don't know what I'm doing, because you can see, Brian, as a fan, surely the fans can see what me and Robbie have done. We have bettered that team. There's no ifs or buts about We have bettered that team. Three or four months ago, we would have lost that three or four nil because we weren't even uh, competed. We're competing and we're trying to play the right way. We're... Um, you can see people want to play for me and Robbie. So, look, yeah, we just need that first win. And if we get that first win, attitude changes. The attitude changes of the players, of the fans, of me. Because I'm I'm, I'm going away. This is tomorrow. I'll be down tomorrow. Thinking, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? We're trying to get players in. I tried to get two strikers in yesterday, it was. And they don't want to know. For, this, for the simple reason of, we are bottom of the league. Not won, it, won one game all year. So, as a player... I respect that because why would you want to come here? At the minute, why would you want to come? So I spoke to Louis Almond, you know, Dale Stevenson's, you know, the kid at Shrewsbury I spoke to. They don't want to come. They don't want to come. So I, I, I am trying. I'm working seven days a week, 90 hour weeks to try and get the players we want, strikers we want. And it's just not happening because they don't want to come. And one thing I did notice today is, I mean, I think we're renowned as being a very, very quiet team. We don't do an awful lot of talking on the pitch, but there was a lot of communication going on between the players, and that was good to see. Well, it needs to happen. Obviously, last week at Fylde, obviously, they have um, music during the, um, you know, when we're in the change room, they have music, and we, we, we switched it off because, you know, talk to each other. Talk to each other, tell them what you want to do in the game, during the game, talk to your partner, the right back and the right back, talk to each other, have some banter, have a bit of, have the crack. Because if you have the music on, you're letting the people who are vocal, you're letting, you're letting them off, and you're letting the people who are shy, just keep shy and sit in the, sit in the corner on their own, do you know what I mean? So turn the music off, talk to each other, have a little chat. So obviously that, that'll come as well. There's, there's ways and means about it, but... Yeah, it, we have got a great group in there. There's a, it, like I stated last week in the press, there was a lot of things wrong in them four walls. A lot of things wrong. Attitude, application and a lot more things wrong and me and Robbie have sorted it out so before your performances before your results you have to sort them out otherwise you ain't getting them that's sorted out we're getting performances we just need a result Brian and on a related subject uh, John Cyrus is normally the quieter of the two centre-backs when Tom, Tom Hannigan tends to do the organising but I thought he stepped up to the plate from a leadership point of view today I thought it was really encouraging Sam Heathcote in the first half and not only did he have a good good game but he had a good influence in terms of his verbal impact I think yeah I mean that's um 
John Sarah's got great attributes. I've not seen anyone jump as and attack the ball or better than him in this division. I've not seen it. That's why I've heard Halifax were interested in him start of the season. So what what let John down when I first started was his clearances and he's worked on it to be fair to him, he's worked on it and, he, and he's getting better and, he, and like you said, I, I heard him today. You know, when he needs to continue that for the last sixteen games, he needs to continue that and hopefully, you know, it'll drag the likes of Elliot round and Sam Eve Coat round and Andy McWilliams round the Carl in front of him. So they need help because they're only young, young pups. So yeah, they need help. So Matt Doughty there after Altingham's 1-0 uh, defeat to a late goal from uh, Liam King against FC Halifax Town this afternoon. Next action for the Robins is uh, next Saturday when we travel to Darlington to take on uh, Darlington 1883.